Hi everyone, this is a video for the uh, twin slit interference experiment, which is part of the quantum physics course. Uh, and what you're going to be doing in this experiment is looking at the wave particle duality of light. Um, and so the way you're going to be doing that is looking at the interference pattern created by both a laser beam, which is a continuous source of light, and a light bulb that's putting out single photons. Um, and you're going to look at the interference pattern created by a single slit and a double slit. Um, so this is your experiment set up here. Uh, you can see I've taken the lid off, so we're going to have a look inside. Um, so there's a laser and a light bulb down this end. Uh, there is a collimating slit here, which just creates a nice even beam, which then hits your double slit or single slit, which you can choose, which is here. And finally, you have a detector down the end, which is going to be used to detect either your laser light or your single photons. Um, so next, we're going to have a look at each of the components in the experiment on their own. Okay, so first we're going to have a look at the laser and the light bulb module. So you can see I have the laser set up here at the moment, and you can see there's a laser beam coming out and it's hitting the collimating slit. So this is for the first part of the experiment where you're using the laser to look at the interference pattern of a single slit and a double slit. Uh, in the second part of the experiment, what then happens is this laser module is moved out of the way like this, and you can now see that there's a path for the light bulb module, which is already aligned. Uh, so normally if you were doing this experiment, you would need to set the laser up at the start so that it's aligned. Uh, and to do that, you use one of these white bits of paper. So you can see that the laser beam is hitting the slit nice and evenly. Okay, so next we have our slit blocker. Uh, and this is how you decide whether you're going to be seeing single slit interference or double slit interference in the experiment. Uh, so you can see here we have this micrometer screw. Uh, and what this allows you to do is to move the blocker, which you can see at the moment is allowing two slits through, hopefully. Uh, but if I move this, what it's gonna do is move a blocker that will eventually block one of the slits Hopefully you can see that. And so now we're down to one slit. Um, so normally what happens in the experiment is you need to note the positions where you have just one slit and both slits. So that way, once you seal the apparatus up and lock the lid on, you can change between having one slit and two slit interference just by using the position of this micrometer screw. Okay, so finally down here, you can see the uh, detector that we used for the first part. Um, so this is the detector in the middle here, which is a very narrow slit that has a photodiode behind it. Uh, and so what this does is it measures the intensity of the light that's coming in and converts this into a voltage. Um, and so you're able to measure this voltage using a multimeter and that will allow you to work out the intensity of the light as a function of position. So you can see we've got another micrometer here. And what this allows you to do is to move the position of the detector slit uh, like so. And so then you can note the intensity at each position as you move the slit across the interference pattern. Okay, so I have now set the experiment up so that only one slit is allowing light through uh, and everything has been sealed back up and the detector is set up and it's reading the voltage on this multimeter here. Um, so what you should be able to see now is as I move the position of the detector slit, you can see the voltage change. And so this is what we use to measure the intensity as a function of position for the first part when you're using the laser. Uh, and so the data that you collect is for one slit open and for both slits open. And so you should expect to see a single slit interference pattern and a double slit interference pattern. Um, in terms of how the measurement's done, it's just a cable here, um, which is a coaxial cable and then it's measuring the voltage drop across the photodiode. Okay, so in the next part, we're gonna switch over to the single photon mode. So with the light bulb and a photomultiplier tube to do the measurement. Okay, so I've now changed the experiment. So it's set up to the single photon mode of operation. Um, so I've moved the laser out of the way. And so the light bulb is now shining still through the same single slit. I haven't moved the position at all. Um, and so what we're doing now is we're detecting single photons using something called a photomultiplier tube. Uh, so I have a photomultiplier tube here, which you can see. Um, 
And so you can see, hopefully, there's a bunch of little kind of vein looking things of metal here. Uh, and so what happens is when an electron hits one of these, it's then accelerated by a high voltage inside the tube. Uh, and that causes it to essentially emit a bunch of electrons. And so this is a way of amplifying the signal. So for every one electron that comes in, um, we end up with a bunch of electrons out. And so this is our method of counting essentially single photons. So there's a few parts for this setup. Um, so first we have a multimeter here. So previously this was being used to measure the voltage of the photodiode. Now what it's actually measuring is the voltage being applied to the photomultiplier tube divided by a thousand. So it's reading 0 0.8 volts at the moment, which means I'm applying 800 volts to the photomultiplier tube. Um, there's also a little shutter here just to protect the photomultiplier. Uh, so this is generally closed when the lid is off the apparatus just to stop the photomultiplier exploding from so much light hitting it. Um, and then finally, we have the oscilloscope over here, which is showing the output. Uh, and also the most important part is the pulse counter over here. So what this is doing is it is measuring one second intervals and it's counting how many photons hit the photomultiplier tube during that one second. Okay, so you can see it counts for a second and then it stops and displays a number. And so this is the number that is recorded in the experiment. So this is how you're um, measuring the intensity of the function and position. Um, once again, same deal. So you can see if I now change the position of the detector slit, hopefully you can see that this number is actually changing. So it's now reading 270, 280, 260. And if I keep going, now reading in the 300s. And now our intensity is decreasing again. So now we're back down into the 180s, 130s. Um, so because you're gonna have some uncertainty in the number, you'll notice if I leave it in the same position, you're gonna get uh, a few different numbers. You'll notice in the data that there are multiple readings for each slip position. And so you have to think about how you're going to use this to work out an actual intensity at each position.